Welcome to Charles Darwin University graduation. Congratulations on your achievement. Now you stand ready to create a new world of possibilities. This is your CDU graduation. Graduands, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, the academic procession is about to commence. Please stand and remain standing until the national anthem has been sung. Please be seated. Her Honour the Honourable Vicky O'Halloran, Administrator of the Northern Territory. The Honourable Natasha Files, MLA, Minister for Health. Mrs. Jo Hersey, MLA, Member for Catherine. Distinguished guests, graduates, family and friends. To commence proceedings, I would like to invite Auntie Billawara Lee to deliver the welcome to country. Administrator, Ministers, Chancellor, Vice-Chancellor. Darandara Gudling Yuabatjiwa, Nayana Naling Billawara Lee. I'm religious to Golomerijin. My name is Auntie Billawara Lee, and I'm really happy for you to call me Auntie B. I am a senior elder of the Larrakia Nation and the Larrakia Academic and Residence for Charles Darwin University. My name Billawara means the red-tailed black cockatoo in Larrakia language. It is my totem, my dreamy. Billawara carries the energy of bringing about change, and I carry this energy as I go through, go about my daily life. Thank you for the respect you show us, the traditional custodians of the land we gather on today. 
Because when you ask a traditional custodian to do this ancient ritual, you show respect to the First Nation peoples, their culture, community and customs. This allows the elder conducting the ceremony to introduce you to the spirit ancestors of their traditional land and you will be kept safe while living and working on their country. I acknowledge and pay my respects to dignitaries, special guests, fellow Larrakia people, families, friends, colleagues and other elders that are here today. To my brothers and sisters from other First Nations, a sincere welcome from my heart. Aboriginal First Nations are the oldest continuous surviving civilization on earth. We are the first people of the Australian continent and we possess our own laws and customs and we remain connected to our ancestral teachings with an unbreakable bond and relationship with our mother the earth and her sister mother nature. The Larrakee people are the traditional custodians of the land and waters of the Greater Darwin region, including Darwin Peninsula, the Cox Peninsula, most of Gun Point, rural Darwin, Darwin Harbour and adjacent islands and lands west of the Howard River. And there are approximately 3,000 Larrakee people living in the Darwin region. And although our lands extend up 50 kilometres inland, we are saltwater people. One of our most important sacred ancestral spirit beings is Darabha which is commonly known as Old Man Rock. He is critical in keeping the Larrakee people protected, strong and resilient, and he sits in the sea off the Kashirina coastline. He is the beginning of a very important Dorula songline, the Rainbow Serpent songline, which runs right around our coastline to the area here where the Darwin Convention Centre sits. Across the road is Dorula Mukbukba, Owl Dreaming, and across the road, up on the hill above the car park, is Dorula Alab, Grandmother Dreaming. So you can see that this is a very important site of significance for us with a powerful combination of rainbow serpent, owl and grandmother energies all combining here where the convention centre sits. Dear graduands, just as we would have done over the last 65,000 years, we would have had a great big corroboree here to celebrate your achievements. You know, if our youth built a really good fish trap or made a wonderful didgeridoo or proved them, like the women proved themselves brilliant with hunting and, and, I mean, more hunting, I'm not hunting, gathering. So today we mirror that traditional ritual by having your graduation ceremony to celebrate your success here on this very important place of significance. This really brings joy to my heart. Graduates, I want to give you my heartfelt congratulations. I feel that over the years of your study, Together with staff of the university, you have woven a very strong mayagwa danala, a spiritual dilly bag, a pandanus net, in which you have placed all your life skills and knowledge gained while studying at CDU. Carry that danala with pride because everything in it will be kept safe. And never forget that if you ever need us, we will be here as you will always be a member of the CDU family. So it is on that note, it is my privilege on behalf of my elders past and present to welcome you all to Gwawa Darahiki, our land. In the beginning, there was one culture, the Larrakia culture. Now here on my traditional lands, we have over 70 different ethnic groups, all living in harmony. And today, my community, my country is like a quilt. With each segment, a beautiful picture of the many different cultures living here sewn together by people's unique stories and the Larrakia song lines. And from the moment you arrived in Darwin or you were born here, you have been immersed in Larrakia ancestral energy. And as you walk across our land, I ask the ancestors to make your journey in my country a safe and rewarding one and that they protect you while you are here. All that I ask in return is that you walk softly on Mother Earth and treat her with love and respect as the Larrakia people do. And if you are walking softly and you are listening carefully, you will hear the deep, rich, ancient voices of my Larrakee ancestors singing the song lines across this beautiful land and waters I call home. And when you leave Larrakee country, always remember the Larrakee people and that you have traveled the sacred lands and waters of my ancestors. So Mila Madamra, be well, Mamak Bachiwa. Thank you.
Thank you, Auntie Billawara, for welcoming us here today. On behalf of the university community and all present today, I acknowledge the traditional owners of the land on which this ceremony is taking place, the Larrakia people, and pay my respects to elders past, present, and emerging. I also wish to extend that respect to all other First Nations people here today. I now invite the Vice-Chancellor and President, Professor Scott Bowman, AO, to deliver the welcome address. I think that was a bit half-hearted. Can we do that again, please? I now invite the Vice-Chancellor and President, Professor Scott Bowman A.O. to deliver the welcome address. Chancellor, I've heard it said that uh, people say Vice-Chancellors have got an ego. I don't know where that comes from. Auntie Billawarra, what a wonderful welcome to your country and what a privilege to be on your country, beautiful Larrakia country. Uh, it is such a special university because of the location, it is so special. And it is so special to work with your people and indigenous people from across the Northern Territory. Today, we are gonna see some absolutely incredible First Nations people graduating. You will notice that, uh, that they are First Nations people because they'll be wearing a sash, so an extra special clap and cheer for them. We're particularly proud today to be graduating people on our RATE program, which is a program that trains teachers' aides out on community. Those uh, graduates will then go on to train to be teachers. That's an absolute, absolutely fantastic. But there is lots of other uh, of your people here, Auntie Billowara. As a university, we have over 2,000 First Nations people studying with us. And just over uh, the last two days, around 300 graduating. And it is a privilege to work and partner with such people. Thank you. Now, I just want to say a real thank you to the administrator, uh, Her Honour. Uh, I was absolutely devastated, Your Honour, to read this week that you had broken your foot and damaged your leg. And Anita, who you're sitting next to, will tell you, I, I was worried for you all day. I was thinking about the pain you were going through for about an hour. Uh, and then I got thinking, and, but it was after I'd been caring, I thought, if, if the administrator has broken a foot, that means that she can only wear one shoe to the graduation. And there's always a bit of competition between uh, Her Honour and myself. And I thought, well, I, I'll be up. Look at this. Hang on a sec. Look at that. Two but. Uh, Okay, the administrator beats me again with one shoe. Thanks for that. But they are pretty special, look at that. Now, I, I get all the boring stuff to do at graduation. The Chancellor gets all the exciting stuff. So I've got to just do the, the stuff that is in the University Act to make sure that everyone actually graduates. Certain things have to happen um, if the students are to graduate. This, so this is quite serious. <laughs> Now, the first one we're okay on because during the ceremony, somebody's mobile phone has to go off. Well, we've already had that. Well done, thank you. Was that, yep. I think just stand up a little bit because we want to applaud you, thank you. Well, well done. The other thing, we need to have a baby to scream out like mad. Yeah, good. And this is a serious thing, actually. If your children or babies start making a lot of noise, please don't be embarrassed. Don't feel that you have to go out and take them outside and they have to be quiet. We're very happy to hear children in here. 
Uh, we, it, it's just great that this is a celebration. And if you're wondering, if you've never been to a graduation, is it a funeral or is it a wedding? It's a wedding. We're here to celebrate. Think of it as a wedding without all the fighting. <laughs> now, the other thing which has to happen, and this is down to our graduands, at least one of you has to fall over as you walk along the red <laughs> carpet. And the more spectacular that fall is, the better the graduation. So anyone wearing high heels over there? Well, we'll see in a minute, so don't be shy. <laughs> so someone's got to do that. If that doesn't happen, I'm looking at that person up there. You're the last to go across. We'll all be depending on you <laughs> to take a big fall. I say that every graduation, I think, please don't let anyone fall. <laughs> now, what else do we need for a graduation? Well, we need an incredible group of staff, and these are an incredible group of staff. So thank you very much to all your hard work and efforts to work with our graduates to get them here today. Well done. We need you. We need you, the proud family, parents, friends, partners. We need you here. Why do we need you here? We need you here to embarrass them. <laughs> we're not one of those stuffy southern universities. We're here to celebrate. So when your graduate walks over the stage, make a load of noise. This is your chance. Think of how miserable they've made your life over the last three or four years. Think of all the time they've been whinging on, oh, I think I'm going to drop out, oh, I haven't got enough money, all those things. This is your chance to get your own back by embarrassing them. When they walk over, scream, shout, shout their names out. Maybe if they've got a little nickname that they had when they were three or four, maybe that could be called out. Anything, really, but make a lot of noise. So we had all the health sciences people yesterday and the engineers. They were okay. The nurses and midwifery uh, parents and friends put a good show on this afternoon. But I think this, this group could really be even better. And we do, of course, the other thing we need is the graduands. And what a great, fantastic group of graduands we've got. We will never have a group of graduands, well, I hope, uh, Minister for Health, that we never have a group of graduands like this, because you have succeeded through a pandemic. You have had your studies interrupted, you've had You've been going down sick at times, staff have been going down sick. When you've had to go on work placements, they've had to be rearranged. It has been tougher for you than just about any other cohort that's ever graduated in this university. We are really proud of you that you got there. Well done. Now, to compensate these people whose life you've made a misery, I want you to all stand up. And give them a round of applause. Okay, don't milk it, sit down. Oh, I got a whistler. That's good even louder when they come across the stage. Now, so I've said this is a celebration. This is a celebration of your success. I want you to have a really great evening. You, you, you're looking a bit miserable, particularly you lot down there, looking a bit miserable at the moment. Smile, smile. Have a really good time and please remember to thank them later on. Thank you. Thank you, Vice-Chancellor. Although I must say, as Chair of the University Health and Safety Committee, I cannot condone you encouraging people in trips and falls. 
<laughs> and now for the presentation of the honorary awards as awarded by the CDU Council. Chancellor, I have the honor to present Miss Robin Margaret Burridge, OAM, to you. Is it going that way? In recognition of their outstanding contributions, Council has determined that Robin Burridge should be awarded the Doctor of Arts Honoris Causa. Robin is to be commended for her tireless efforts in creating a more inclusive and understanding community through her ad advocacy work, particularly in disability services. Robin, who was born with cerebral palsy, has led by example in her work to not only improve the lives of people living with disability, but to improve our whole community through greater inclusion. Robin began her advocacy work in the Northern Territory in 1980 as the coordinator of the International Year of Disabled People 1981 for the Northern Territory government. According to an ABC story published more than three decades later, Robin recalled that when she arrived, there was an assumption shared by many people that there weren't many people with a disability in the territory because you didn't see them around. And her response was, maybe they just can't get out of their homes. And that doggedness and the way she embraced the region as a champion for change earned her the citizen of the year by the Darwin City Council in 1981 after she had been in the Northern Territory for only five months. She represented the community for 20 years as an alderman on Darwin City Council, including one year as Deputy Lord Mayor. In 2020 to 2012, Robin worked for the Henderson government and was appointed a ministerial advisor in disability to the then Minister for Health and Families, Con Bratskalis. She has had numerous awards and recognitions. In December 2017, uh, Robin was further recognized when she was announced as a joint winner of the Fitzgerald Social Change Award as part of the Nor Northern Territory Human Rights Awards. On Australia Day 2020, Robin was awarded an OAM in the General Division for Service to People with a Disability. And in November last year, Robin was announced as the 2022 Northern Territory Senior, Senior Australian of the Year. And she said this has kept her very busy. Robin continues to advocate for people with a disability and to help people understand all different kinds of disability. And when asked about her greatest challenge, she said there's truth in the saying, your attitude can be my greatest handicap. Chancellor, I present um, in recognition of her outstanding service to people with a disability, Charles Darwin University Council awards Robin Burridge the honorary degree of Doctor of Arts. It is now time for today's occasional address, which will be delivered by Mrs. Renee Long. 
Rene Long and Aranta Wolpuri and the Waramangu woman with strong ongoing connections to land and family in the southern and western Berkeley regions. Rene has an outstanding career in policy development, program management and service delivery focused on First Nations training and employment, advancement strategies and economic development. She is the current Director of Industry Strategy at the Department of Industry, Tourism and Trade of the Northern Territory Government. She was also the inaugural Chief Executive Officer of the Northern Territory Indigenous Business Network. Renee has a strong passion for nurturing the next generation of leaders, having been a judge for the Northern Territory Training Awards and being a member of the Job Trainer Expert Advisory Committee. She has previously studied a graduate diploma in public policy in the Northern Institute and is now studying a Master of Public Policy at Charles Darwin University. I'm pleased to welcome on stage Renee Long. Good evening. Thank you for the introduction. Uh, Administrator, Ministers, Chancellor, Vice-Chancellor, distinguished guests, graduates, family and friends. Good evening and thank you for the opportunity to present here tonight. My name is Renee Long. I'm an Aranda, Walpuri Warrumbunga woman from the Northern Territory. However, I do reside here on Larrakia country. I would like to pay my respects to the Larrakia people, their elders, past, present and future. I would also like to acknowledge the traditional custodians of the respective lands that all the other attendees may be participating from today. I'm going to tell you a bit about my career. It's not that unusual from others. However, I did sometimes take the path less travelled. I took risks, changed jobs every few years and because of this I was sometimes criticised and mocked even. But I learned that it doesn't matter what other people think, it only mattered what I did. Something that I don't tell too many people is that through my senior years of high school, I wasn't really challenged. I attended school every day, but it was mostly to play sport and to do enough to sometimes get good grades. It wasn't a surprise to my dad when I told him I wanted to leave and get a job. At first he said no. He said, you're the eldest, of, eldest daughter and you need to set examples for your younger sisters. But time went by and I still wanted to earn my own money. The part-time job just wasn't quite cutting it. My dad eventually relented and he said I could only leave if I did something reasonable and purposeful. I eventually found myself a traineeship in business and I actually did really well. I became a finalist for trainee of the year and given the calibre of the other finalists, it was a pretty good achievement, I thought. I was the only one in my family that did not complete Year 12, though. I later left Tennant Creek and became to, came to the bright lights of Darwin, where I worked for an Aboriginal organisation. After about three or four years, I tried to apply for other jobs to progress my career. But after about 40 job applications and not a single interview, I felt like I was in a rut. To change the status quo, I enrolled in night school at CDU and completed a certificate four in business. I also studied some units from the Bachelor of Business. This definitely helped me because upon completing night school, I wanted to job at the federal government. It was here that I began my career economic participation, mostly through Aboriginal employment programs, but also through mainstream programs such as Job Network and Job Active. I really enjoyed this time of my career. It was rewarding to see Aboriginal people compete, complete traineeships or apprenticeships to see their lives change for themselves and for their families. I observed firsthand the ripple effect of how one person's getting a job changes the lives of others around them. Some of these changes included moving off welfare, some moved out of crowded homes and into the private rental market, others got their driver's licenses and for the first time purchased cars. It created role models within families and amongst peers and friends. This experience showed me that people wanted to work and given the opportunity and support, anything was possible. The other thing I learned was to expect the unexpected. 
people wanted to move away from traditional roles in Aboriginal organisations and non-government organisations. People wanted to work in the private sector. They wanted to work in trades or retail, mining and tourism and hospitality. I believed in the ripple effect so much that after hours I spent time helping friends and families with their job applications and preparing for interviews. I was getting so many requests for help that I, I authored an e-book called The Art of Applications to help people understand how to address selection criteria. But as with all government policies, this has changed and they now just want a one-pager with the CV. <laughs> this isn't a bad thing. It's actually one less barrier for Aboriginal people getting a job. After many years of working in economic participation, I wanted to see more change. I wanted to go beyond finding people jobs and see how people could create wealth for themselves. I became interested in entrepreneurship and business development. I wanted to see systemic change so that people could become financially independent. I worked on a major housing project called the Strategic Housing Infrastructure Project, also known as CHIP. This project was mostly about Aboriginal employment. However, where possible, they also encouraged Aboriginal people to set up small businesses and become sole traders so they could continue the maintenance on houses in the future after construction was completed. This opened my eyes to how businesses could be created off the back of major projects, particularly in remote areas. Examples included an all-female painting crew that was set up, carpenters with ABNs to do maintenance, or larger scale enterprises such as taking over the workers' camps and making them into motels after the uh, construction was completed. I returned to working with employment programs after CHIP. However, my thoughts were still with wealth creation. Employment programs and jobs were a starting point, but the only way for Aboriginal women to create wealth was to do it themselves, I thought, not through the government programs. This was also about the time I enrolled in CDU's Master of Public Policy. I wanted to contribute to the development of policies that better enabled wealth creation. I wanted to test my we need to do it ourselves theory in wealth creation, so I set up a consulting business. However, before I could begin trading, I was offered the role of CEO of the Northern Territory Indigenous Business Network. It was an opportunity to influence policy development and government procurement, which could enable wealth creation, and it also meant I could work closely with business owners. So I put my consulting business on hold and became the inaugural CEO of NTIBN. Here I met some really awesome and inspiring people. They had great business ideas and were very entrepreneurial. I saw many business owners build an asset base that could grow their companies and support their families. They employed their extended family and friends, enabling them to gain skills and experience. It was a ripple effect on steroids. The ripples went so much wider. Businesses also went further to support their communities through sponsoring events and causes important to them, such as footy carnivals and art festivals. Some Aboriginal people owned more than one business and the opportunities for partnerships were endless. The businesses were across a wide range of industries and were of various sizes and structures. There were sole traders, partnerships, companies, trusts, joint ventures and social enterprises. However, talk to any business owner and they will tell you that running a business is not easy. This is true and I learned this because I eventually did go out and work in my consulting business. Owning a business is a hard slog. It's important to connect with others, seek support, advice and guidance, and even consider getting a mentor. Organisations such as NTIBN can provide support and connect business owners to programs to help build their businesses. And this bring me, brings me to today's graduates. Whether you're starting your career, mid-career, or having a career change, you don't have to go it alone. Seek support and guidance, find a mentor, and leverage off organisations that can support you, including CDU. From what you've heard from me, you can see I've worked in many roles and with many government departments and organisations. I took on short-term contracts, I took on challenging roles, and it was these roles that gave me the most personal growth. Do not shy away from challenges, embrace them and really test your, and strengthen your capabilities. I definitely did not follow the old myth of one employer for life. In fact, employers don't really want that anymore. Business owners want people to broaden their experience and obtain a depth of knowledge that enables you to work in a variety of settings and with many people. Over the years, some of my peers have mocked me, said I overdressed for my job and called me Ally McBeal behind my back. <laughs> they said I moved around too much and would laugh and say, where are you now? We can't keep up. 
But the fact is, I took calculated risks that others would not. I made informed decisions about my choices where others preferred to stay within their comfort zones. I dressed how I wanted and pursued my career how I saw fit. And while nothing is perfect, I can honestly say I have very, very few regrets. I gained a vast amount of experience and knowledge and met some really awesome people who I'm still friends with today. So on that note, I encourage you, graduates, to pursue your dreams and ambitions, to be bold and courageous, and be mindful that these may change with time or age and or circumstance, but that's okay too. And as I said before, seek support and guidance, but ultimately you are in the driver's seat. Take control of your careers and don't let anyone tell you how it's going to be. Congratulations to all of you today and I wish you well on your journey and all the very best with your careers. Good luck. Thank you for your inspirational and encouraging words to our graduates, Renee. Uh, yes. <laughs> and to help them and their careers to take off. Today's musical presentation follows that theme and it will be Learning to Fly from Tom Petty, performed by Melanie Gray and Andy Toombs. Melanie studied land conservation and management at CDU straight from school and then decided to follow her passion with music. Melanie incorporates her appreciation and knowledge of the Northern Territory landscapes in her songwriting today. Melanie has also taught singing at the Centre for Youth and Community Music at CDU. Melanie and Andy. Thank you. Yes, four years at uni in land conservation and management. I thought I'm going to be a park ranger, an environmental scientist that sings on the side. <laughs> now I'm a singer that sings about the environment. <laughs> so you just never know where your studies are going to take you. And there is never a wasted degree ever. Life will take you around so many roads. And you guys have had the toughest years at uni doing this during COVID. <laughs> I couldn't imagine that. But now it is your turn to fly. And the world needs your light and your skills and your talents. And it's an honour to be here. So thanks for having me, Nandy. Starting out on a dirty road. Starting out. All alone and The sun went down As I crossed the hill And the town lit up And the world stood still Yeah Learning to fly Learning to fly Oh, but I ain't got wings Learning to fly The good old days may not return. The rocks might melt and the sea may burn. I'm learning to fly, learning to fly. Learning to fly, coming down, learning to fly. Some say life will beat you down. Your heart mm, 
steal your crown. Yeah, yeah. So I started out on a God knows where. I guess I know. Thank you. Thanks, Melanie and Andy, for our musical interlude. I now invite the Vice Chancellor and President, Professor Scott Bowman, AO, to commence the conferring of awards. Is that enthusiastic enough? I was listening to the song, I missed this. Hang on. I missed the phone. Okay. Would all graduates please stand? And smile. Chancellor, as Vice-Chancellor of Charles Darwin University, I submit to you candidates for awards as set out in this official list of graduates. I certify that those listed have satisfied the requirements for the award of those degrees, diplomas and certificates. What a great song, what a great university. As Chancellor of Charles Darwin University, I hereby admit to their respective awards the candidates whose names appear in the official list of graduates. Congratulations. Well done, family and friends and our graduates. Thank you. Would all the graduates please resume their seats? I now call upon the Dean of the Asia Pacific College of Business and Law to present the graduates from their college. Chancellor, Vice Chancellor, distinguished guests, graduates, family, friends and colleagues. We are celebrating the achievements of our students and I'm honoured to be part of that celebration. The Asia Pacific College of Business and Law is a dual sector college that offers a diverse range of courses from VET certificates and diplomas to undergraduate and postgraduate degree programs. The rich learning environment that we have is enhanced by the fact that CDU is a national leader in online education as well as providing a quality on-campus education, attracting students from across Australia and overseas. The quality of our programs are assured by both professional accreditation and university accreditation, frequently enriched through overseas study opportunities and internship placements. But this ceremony is to in, 
is to celebrate your individual success. You've worked hard to reach this point and I offer my congratulations to you and to those who've supported you. However, I expect that you'll be now looking forward to the future rather than the years behind you. No doubt many of you will receive a good deal of advice as to the path you should take from here. And I'll not add to that by giving you my own personal advice. But if I may, I will leave you with a quote from the American novelist and Nobel laureate Toni Morrison. She said, you are your own stories and added, being your own story means that you can always choose the tone. It also means that you can invent the language to say who you are and what you mean. Good luck and best wishes for the future. Thank you. Have we got... They're ready? Oh, you've changed it, okay. Um, Chancellor, in my capacity as Dean of the College of the Asia Pacific College of Business and Law, I present to you for the award of a Certificate Three in Business, Alinda Valenton. <laughs> Chancellor, for a Certificate Three in Commercial Cookery, Giselle Montero Johns. Mary Joey Martin. And Chancellor Evie Mondreva. <laughs> Chancellor, for a certificate three in hairdressing, Mia Farrow. And Chancellor Hannah Hersey. <laughs> Chancellor, for a certificate three in hospitality, Alessandra Sophia Irene Carlos Bellina. Chancellor, with a, with a certificate three in retail, Lila Correa Calvis. <laughs> Chancellor, with a certificate four in accounting and bookkeeping, Christina Macrillos. Sarah Lee Reeves. <laughs> and Chancellor Afrin Bakata Sayida Azmat. Chancellor, for a certificate four in business, Amy Lee Bates. Kimberly Jean Davy. Amanda Christine Lucas. Christelle Lyons. And Chancellor Helen Catherine Whitehouse.
Chancellor for a Certificate of Foreign Human Resources, Chantelle Kuhn. <laughs> and Chancellor Dominique Lee O'Mullen. Chancellor for a Certificate Four in Project Management Practice, Jeanette Crowhurst. <laughs> Chancellor for a Diploma of Event Management, Takesha Doherty Cole. Chancellor for a Diploma of Hospitality Management, Van King Hoang. <laughs> Shu Zen Li. <laughs> Ramida Simpachraman. And Chancellor Fenny Tanadayi. <laughs> Chancellor, for a Diploma of Hospitality Management and a Certificate Three in Hospitality, Alan Villa. <laughs> Chancellor, for a Diploma of Hospitality Management and a Certificate Four in Commercial Cookery, Parawadi Chatliwat. <laughs> Yu Yu Chen. <laughs> Kwong Kang Chu. <laughs> and Chancellor. Heng Chi Lin. <laughs> Chancellor for a Diploma of Laws, Benjamin Cow. <laughs> Chancellor for a Diploma of Leadership and Management, Stephanie Barber. Chancellor for an Associate Degree of Legal Studies, Elizabeth Lucy Sandow. <laughs> Chancellor for a Bachelor of Accounting, Kalpana Ariel. Sabine Beskota. <laughs> Pratikshia Basnet. <laughs> Mandeep Kaur Chung. Wok Zad Vin Dang. <laughs> Andrea Claudia Marie Pauline JC Delafonte.
Nissan Sala, Madhu Shani, Dodan Duwu, Weeda Singer, Arch Chig. John Paul Ero Dosio. Harman Preet Singh. Ashish Kendall. Gayanu Kahatri. Ruchini Rajiwani Pereira Loku Gonu Woj. Oshani Githika Pereira Makawitij. Nia Maski. Clary May Millen. <laughs> Maria Musellus. <laughs> Linadua Lokuj Paswan Tithrara Munawira. Ashish Neopane. <laughs> Min Kyun Nguyen. <laughs> Cindy K. Nelson. Paul Michael Savas. <laughs> Sujin Silwell. <laughs> Samina Tamang. And Chancellor, he win Wu. And for the Bachelor of Accounting and Diploma of Laws, Byron McGregor. Chancellor for the Bachelor of Business, Ellen Allison Carter. <coughs> Jan Danielle Domingo. Sarah Mary Fowler. <laughs> T. 
Timothy James Francis. Gabrielle Ann Gillimack. Rishab Goyal. Lily Kavar Fiafi. Prasham Shah Koralala. <laughs> Chloe Ann Lay. <laughs> Calvin Lim. Lorenzo Liam Liu. Charlotte Elizabeth Palmer. And Chancellor Xu Yu Yang. <laughs> Chancellor for the Bachelor of Laws, Jamie Lee Alvarado. Kirsty Lee Baldwin Smith. <laughs> Peter Buckley. Brittany Kusha. <laughs> Nicholas Dacus Dacus. <laughs> William Hadley Thomas Eddyvane. Samantha Erin Hadfield. <laughs> Damien Victor Hearn. <laughs> Mark Eric Hibbins. Katie Patricia James. Mark John.
Lachlan John McDonald. Cody James McFarlane. Christopher Paul McGill. <laughs> Jessica Whitney McLean. <laughs> Lindsay Claire Moldenhauer. David Ninnan. Jarrett O'Neill. Faris Omidvar. Terence John Roth. <laughs> Rhiannon Sarah Walker. Chancellor, with a Bachelor of Laws and a Bachelor of Arts, Olivia Grace Ann Hill. <laughs> and Chancellor, Eleni Limbiris. Chancellor, with a graduate certificate of strategic management, Geoffrey Allen Radford. <laughs> and Chancellor, Shorka Tati Pakala. Chancellor, Master of Business Administration, Natalie Elisa Sicconi. <laughs> Patrick Stevenson. and Chancellor Nazili Mondahar. <laughs> Chancellor, with a Master of Business Administration Professional Practice, Amrita Baznet Subidi. T. Yen Ni Dao. <laughs> Pierre Rong Dong. <laughs> Q. 
Ching Kong Yang. Dexter S. Cope. Monica Gurain. <laughs> Hien Ha. <laughs> T. New Wai Yong. Jing Lu. <laughs> Ashma Pradhan. <laughs> Reshma Shwetha. Jonathan Tan. <laughs> and Chancellor Heilun Wee. Chancellor, with a Master of Professional Accounting, Professional Practice, Ikra Ali. <laughs> Ethan Aslan. Ranjuni Chakma. <laughs> Wing C. Vinci Cheng. <laughs> Fan Fu Dang. Eden Tom. <laughs> Gayan Budhika Gali Abbasakari Patharand Nedge. <laughs> Prunella Gurung. Ronaldo Cockro Handyo. <laughs> MD Quat Rule Hassan. <laughs> Rafat Hussain. Fu Kwai Hyun. <laughs> Freyana Cashman. <laughs> Samjana Kottija.
Frigil Couture. Shinzi Lee. Yijing Li. <laughs> Fei Lui. <laughs> Joan Jane Lizada. Fu Sing Lu. <laughs> Nyok Min Tu and Mai. <laughs> Krishma Mahanandai. Zahid Mansur. <laughs> Yi Cho Ang. <laughs> Tight Lee Nguyen. Muhammad Yassi Noor. <laughs> Janik Bahadur Pandit. <laughs> Puja Hasmukbai Patel. Bynod Padel. <laughs> Tran Kui Fan. <laughs> Rafita Hussain Riha. Sadman Sajid. <laughs> Kazi Murafa Salihadan. <laughs> Muhammad Sharez. Maria Vida Rasa Simeon. <laughs> Amarinda Singh. Kwang Ying Su. Yeah. 
Triya Tamang. Viet Thang Juan Vu. Jing Mao Yu. Lan Zhao. Yu Chi Leo. And Chancellor Manuka Sa. <laughs> Chancellor, that concludes the graduation graduate pre presentation from the Asia Pacific College of Business and Law. I now call upon the Dean of the College of Indigenous Futures, Education and the Arts, Professor Ruth Wallace, to present the graduates from their college. Thank you. Chancellor, Vice-Chancellor, special guests, graduates, families, friends and colleagues. It gives me great pleasure to celebrate the achievements of graduating students from the College of Indigenous Futures, Education and the Arts. They have developed expertise in teacher education, Indigenous knowledge practices, human geography, disaster preparedness and management, languages, humanities and other areas, as well as the creative industries. At the college, we are proud to offer unique and inspired learning opportunities with diverse courses across many areas of study. Our students study courses in some of the remote, most re remote locations in Australia, or well, you might find them just down the road. Their programs range from certificates in areas like screen and new media, music, vo vocational education teaching, or education support, diplomas and undergraduates in education or the arts, enabling programs to help students make the transition to study, and then all the way to the Bachelor or Master of Education to work in early childhood, primary or secondary education. Today we also celebrate students graduating from the Bachelor of Master of Arts, specialising in areas such as Indigenous knowledges, history, creative practice, architectural design, and the Bachelor or Masters in Humanitarian and Emergency Management, as well as those who undertook research through their honours, masters or PhD programs, just to name a few. And the work doesn't stop there. Our expansive collection of partnerships provide further opportunities for mentoring, placements and internships to build on sc student skills developed through their university experience at CDU. Our graduates, we know, move into the workforce with exceptional skills, knowledge and the confidence to succeed. Graduation, we all know, is the culmination of many years of hard work. Through deep engagement and commitments, graduates have developed creative, professional and critical reasoning and demonstrated their resourcefulness. In the next stages of your journey, I encourage you all to continue to bring your unique perspective and solutions to the emerging social, cultural and economic issues that face us, to share your voice with the rest of the world. Your story matters. Your ideas matter, your experiences matter, your vision for what our world can be and should be matters. Today we are celebrating your success as graduates who are commencing new paths in all works, walks of life, in schools, community services, galleries and offices of a changing and diverse world. We feel confident that you leave CDU with the knowledge, skills and experiences required for your future endeavours. You will be leaders and innovators in your chosen careers and an example for all those that have supported your journey and are inspired by your achievement. So please enjoy this moment 
you deserve this celebration on an important milestone. As a member of the Charles Darwin family, Charles Darwin University family, we rejoice in your achievements now and in the future. This is a time to remember the words of Mahatma Gandhi. You must be the change you want to see in the world. I offer all graduates my deep congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> Chancellor. In my capacity as the Dean of College of Indigenous Futures, Education and the Arts, I present to you for the award of Certificate Four in Education Support, Judith Graham. Edna Martin. Noraline Pabustan. And Chancellor Eloisa Grace Edwards Shuck. And for the first time, the first graduates of the Undergraduate Certificate Remote Educators, Sheena Gumbala. <laughs> Arnold Minanawoy. <laughs> Shirley Walpoloi Mitjangba. Yvonne Mitcherandi. <laughs> Esther Rarinha. And Chancellor Heather Raparnia. Congratulations. for the Diploma of Arts, Ellie, Emily Chiman Ford. <laughs> Sorry, Em. <laughs> and Chancellor, Letitia Audrey Lloyd. the Diploma of Languages, Samuel John Andrews.
for the Bachelor of Arts, Sky Zara Lavelle. And Chancellor Parachat Tawarn. For the Bachelor of Creative Arts, Alice Marie Peckett. For the Bachelor of Creative Arts and Industry New Media Design, James Wyatt Olson. Sorry. For the Bachelor of Design, Naima Muhammad. <laughs> and Chancellor, Duk Vinto. For the Bachelor of Education, Amanpreet Carl. <laughs> and Chancellor, Michelle Ashley Espinosa. For the Bachelor of Education, Early Childhood Teaching, Irina Andrea Bugena. <laughs> Teresa Margaret De Silva. Nola Fronda. <laughs> Carolyn Mary Gosper. And Chancellor Chloe Chui Ing Ting. <laughs> For the Bachelor of Education in Early Childhood Teaching Birth to 12 Years, Danithi Tilakaratnya. For the Bachelor of Education Primary, Esperanza Barreto. <laughs> Sky Clayton. Emily Joyce Sound. <laughs> Logan Douglas Turnbull. <laughs> Joshua Benjamin Van Boskwilen.
and Chancellor Charlotte Walpist. For the Bachelor of Education Secondary, Daniel Peter Brummett. Shanae Kuo. And Chancellor Elizabeth Rose Scherzer. For the Bachelor of Education Secondary Teaching Math Mathematics, Eugene Ferreras. For the Bachelor of Education Secondary Teaching Science, Luke Jason Lamb. For the Bachelor of Humanitarian and Community Studies, Stanley Obina Agbai. <laughs> Sandhya Bartula. Galiza Jornashi. <laughs> Marib Hossein. Fawad Islam. <laughs> Rutendu Niyam Mupinga. Ruby Ann Phillips. <laughs> For the Bachelor of Teaching and Learning Early Childhood, Alice Suzanne Johnston. For the Master of Education, Global Learning, Tarrant Knox Edwards. <laughs> Vitri Aditha Haning. Iona Canelli. <laughs> Catherine June Marine Leo. Prasha Sufal. <laughs> and Chancellor Alexander Werner.
for the Master of Emergency and Disaster Management, Vanavasa Vono. For the Master of Public Policy, Erin Thistleton. For the Master of Teaching, Yuchu Chen. Haifa Cherry Kamel. Chin Wai Cheung. Chavi. Yuvaranjan Ganesh Bhavan. Gurmeet Kaur. Kithmi Kaushala Huaj. Chin Hoang T. Tan Juan Hun Ram Krishna Jayana. <laughs> Hasina Kodam Paramban Osakan. Kulwinda Kaur. Lakvir Kaur. <laughs> Nadia Kristen Lelly. Jing Wen Lee. <laughs> Hanika Laha. Rajitha Manoj. <laughs> Melvin Monsi.
Dan Mu. Tu Hung Nguyen. <laughs> Braden J. New. Rajitha Pereira. <laughs> Knock and two fan. Vinindir Kaur Rajput. <laughs> Tinusha Rasangali Ran Ranawaka Patanagaji. <laughs> Lei Langani Sevenaratna. Namrata Shrestha. Shinsu. Hassan Ahmed Talkadur. <laughs> Jun Yong Ten. <laughs> Havai Tran. Stella Wallace. Lun Wang. <laughs> Vanessa Avril Tanu Wayaja. Charlotte Ann Williams Greywolf. Yeah. Edwina Julian Wintle. Yeah. Jian Wu. Gia Gia, Melissa Yu. <laughs> Shuan Ting Yu. <laughs> Ruiz Xiao.
and Chancellor Yan Fang Zhuang. And for the Bachelor of Humanitarian Studies, Evelyn Gudbadinya. Chancellor. That concludes the graduate presentation from the College of Indigenous Futures, Education and the Arts. I now call upon the Pro Vice Chancellor of Research and Innovation, Dr. Steve Rogers, to present the doctoral graduates. Chancellor, Vice-Chancellor, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, graduates and colleagues. It's my pleasure to be with you tonight to present the doctoral graduates. The Doctor of Philosophy, or PhD, is awarded on the basis of in-depth research conducted over an extended period of between three and five years. Or in the case of part-time students, up to 10 years. The resulting research is assessed by a national and international panel of academic experts to determine whether the research makes a significant and original contribution to knowledge. The candidates today have met these incredibly demanding criteria. Chancellor. In my capacity as Pro Vice Chancellor Research and Innovation, I present to you Helen Leah Castellan Chapman. <laughs> no, what's <laughs> Helen? Just <laughs> okay. Helen's clearly very keen. <laughs> uh, Helen holds an associate in music, Australia, a uh, licentiate in music, a bachelor of arts in music, and a graduate diploma in performance and a master of music. For their thesis entitled, Selected Piano Music of Bartok, an Invis investigation of Australian piano teachers approaches to teaching post-tonal music as supervised by Dr. Sharon Leers. I now present to you Dr. Helen Leah Castellan Chapman. Chancellor, I present to you Jan Marie Herivel. <laughs> Jan Marie holds a Bachelor of Arts, Library and Information Science from Charles Sturt University a Bachelor of Southeast Asian Studies Honours from the Northern Territory University, a Bachelor of Primary Education Teaching from Charles Sturt University, and a Graduate Certificate in Information Sciences, Records and Archives from Edith Cowan University. For their thesis entitled, A Perfect Malay, James Scott East Indies Country Trader, as supervised by Dr. Stephen Faram, I now present to you Dr. 
Jeanne-Marie Herivel. Chancellor, I present to you Francis Simon Thomas Morris. <laughs> Francis is a chartered accountant from the Institute of Chartered Accountants in England and Wales and holds a Masters of Business Administration from the University of Wales and the University of Manchester. For their thesis titled, The Critical Factors in the Establishment of a Sustainable Accountancy Profession in Fragile States, Timor Leste, a case study, as supervised by Professor Ruth Wallace, I present to you, Dr. Francis Simon Thomas Morris. Chancellor, that concludes the presentation of the doctoral graduates. I would now like to welcome Rafat Hossein, who was highly recommended by the Asia Pacific College of Business and Law and will speak on behalf of the graduates. Honourable Chancellor, Vice-Chancellor, Administrator of Northern Territory, faculty members, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, a very good afternoon. And I, Rafat Hussain, welcoming you all to the graduation ceremony of Charles Darwin University 2022. Before I start, I would like to acknowledge the Larakia people, the traditional custodian of the land, and would like to pay my respects to their elders past, present and emerging. First and foremost, to my all fellow mates and peers, congratulations. We are graduates now. This is the day we all have been waiting for ever since the start of our journey in university. And it is an absolute honor to be able to stand in front of you all today and celebrate these achievements together. Many valedictorians most likely begin their speech by telling everyone what success means to them, and they should, because this is a defining moment. I'd like to draw your attention to the fact that we started our journey with a global pandemic back in 2020. On one point of success that we would all agree that even with World Health Emergency, we still managed to graduate. Thank you. I must say, it was not easy for us. It was a new country, new university, new people, but at the same time, nationwide lockdown made it, nationwide lockdown was at play and made it harder for us to make new meet new people and make new friends. But it has always been said that the tough times makes the strongest men. Yeah, so here we are today. Life takes another big leap just with the idea of studying in Australia, and that happened to all of us. And as being no different than all of you, it happened to me as well. I started my journey in Australia back in 2020, coming straight from Bangladesh. It has been a bittersweet journey for me. I left my friends and families member, family members back in home to follow my dreams in Australia. And of course, it was not as easy as it seems. Starting from cultural shock, change in study patterns to loneliness and whatnot. 
but everyone else in the room today, this is the place where I studied hard, worked harder, I believed, I waited, I dreamed, I broke up thousands of times, but yet stood up a millions of times, believing that this is the place where I will grow and I will get better, and I did get better. We think two years time is a small span of time, but I say within these two years, CDU can offer a lot more than you, anyone can ever imagine. It is a lot more than studying. I started my journey with CDU as being an international student, where I was studying mostly online, thanks to COVID, to working part-time with CDU, being the resident leader of CDU official accommodation, where I was responsible for residents living in designated buildings, over the time, I got experience working in places like Australia Post, Darwin Turf Club, and my most favorite, CDU Library. Working through these different areas, what I have learned is that universal professional customer skill, time management, work efficiency, but in overall, how Australian culture works. One of my key learning is that how, how amazingly cultural diversification brings joy to workplace. In my country, we all are from one culture, one food pattern, one living pattern. But here in Darwin, what I have found that people with different cultural backgrounds, with different living pattern, can complement each other, and if requires, are able to work together to attain the objective. My working career has not been the only source of learning, but volunteer has played a vital role too. Thanks to my flexible study options of online and offline, I was able to be volunteer for CDU official student ambassador and treasurer for Bangladesh Student Association. <laughs> Both of these organizations have helped me to get involved with CDU life even more and fall in love with Darwin, which I can call home now. I have made the best possible friends by working in this organization, and we all know how boring life is without having our friends around us. On this point to Bangladesh Student Association, I'd like to personally thank you for keeping me your MC for each event. If it wasn't for those events, I wouldn't be able to, I wouldn't be able to speaking here today in front of you all. With all these learnings in my university life, currently I'm working as a graduate role in KPMG Australia, supporting Northern Territory government in project services. Last but not the least, all these accomplish accomplishments, the whole journey would not have been possible without the constant support of the people who are here today. I'll, I will start with my faculty member, Indra Abeskar, Dr. Shagat Tutubi, uh, Ritika Singhal, my work supervisors, Penny Bidel, Nicola Alsop, and special one, Celine Coleflex, and my parents, Ammu and Abu, and my friends who are here today to cheer me up. But most importantly, my brother Shamir Hussain, who is here today, and his beloved wife Shaheen, like you have always been here. I know I have done the only part of the struggle and a lot more is out there for me, for all of us. But however, I again believe that how we have succeeded the journey of being a graduate, we will of course overcome the ones in the future endeavors. I wish you all a very successful and perfect prosperous journey ahead, and thank you to our audience for making it tonight and being part of our precious moment. I hope you enjoy the rest of the night. Thank you. Thank you, Afat, for that heartfelt speech on behalf of all the graduates here today. Um, we are coming towards the end, but Please do stay to the end as we have a wonderful finale to this ceremony. But I now call upon the Chancellor to deliver the charge to graduates. Graduates, please stand. As newly conferred graduates of Charles Darwin University, it is at this stage in proceedings that we conduct a turning of the tassel ceremony. It's a long-standing university tradition that officially symbolizes your transition from graduate to graduate of Charles Darwin University. Please now move your tassel from the right side of your mortarboard to the left. 
I charge you as graduates to maintain a commitment to lifelong learning, to strive for truth, integrity and compassion, to contribute to your chosen profession and by the application of your abilities to support and nurture the communities that you are part of. I charge you to take with you the spirit and resilience of the Northern Territory. Walk softly but proudly in the knowledge of your profession. May your achievements bring honour to your university, your chosen profession and to yourself. Good luck one and all. Well done. With the, graduate, with the graduates please resume their seats. This ceremony is drawing to a close. Our graduates are now graduates. Graduates, we ask that before you leave, we ensure you have, we have your contact details. Uh, you met David, our alumni manager, before. Um, he would be very pleased to be in touch with all of you. Thank you, family and friends, for joining this celebration today. Thank you for the support you've shown our graduates over the months and years of their study. A last word of appreciation goes to the very committed and hardworking staff at this university who teach, guide and support CDU students. Finally, let me once again congratulate our wonderful graduates we will follow your future careers with interest. I wish you every success um, and happiness for the future. Every new day begins with a choice. The choice to make time for what really matters. To use every opportunity to work toward our goals and to make every day count. Once we committed, we knew it was possible. Today is a time to celebrate and reflect on what we achieved. It wasn't always easy. We had our doubts the juggle seemed impossible. The early mornings and the late nights, when the inspiration was not there, the search for perfection. We just wanted to get it right. But for every challenge faced, we always had the end in sight. We found our inner strength and determination. We found support along the way. We used perseverance and passion to reach our potential and to find our new It all comes down to this moment. A feeling that will live with us forever. To share with the ones who've inspired us. To become the person we were meant to be. Graduates, distinguished guests, families and friends, the procession will now prepare to form a guard of honour for our newest graduates. The Chancellor and Vice-Chancellor then invite you to join them in the concourse for light refreshments. Please now stand with the procession and remain standing until the graduates have left the hall. Thank you.